What's up everyone, Chris with Be My Nest Demos, and if this is your first time here, thank you so much for coming to hang out. I hope you have an awesome time. If this isn't your first time here, you are so super rad for coming back. If you haven't already, hit the subscribe button, like this video, and leave me a comment letting me know, let me know what your favorite piece of gear that you own is. Let's go ahead and get into this video. This is the Two Notes Opus, and if you've been watching the last few videos, you know that I have really, really good things to say about this. And the truth is, in general, I like to be pretty positive about stuff. There are enough people on here tearing things down and only pointing out the negative that I just prefer to be positive about things and look at, you know, like the bright side, I guess you could say. But that doesn't mean that this is perfect. I have a few complaints, a few things that I don't like, and I feel it's only fair that I share those as well. First off, we're going to start out with the presets. Now, there are a ton of presets in this thing, but like a lot of other modelers, they're kind of hit or miss. If you're looking for an ACDC preset, a cream preset, a classic rock, dad rock, blues rock preset, they're fine. You know, they're pretty good. But if you're wanting something else, if you're wanting modern metal, hardcore, punk rock, it just isn't here. They have a gent preset that, I don't know, man, I'm not a, I, I, I don't have a seven or eight string guitar, so I don't play a ton of gent, but to me it wasn't uh, convincing. They have one called Link in the Parking, I believe is what it's called, which I guess is supposed to be kind of a Linkin Park kind of vibe, so whatever. But the one that disappoints me the most, the one that is just egregious to me, is the Green Punk preset. Based on the name, my assumption is that this would be a kind of Marshall-based, you know, Brit-based uh, punk rock preset based on Green Day sounds, early Green Day sounds most likely, but it just isn't. <laughs> Listen, I'm not sure who showed up at Two Notes one day, threw together this preset, and was like, yeah, that sounds like Green Day to me. I, I don't know who did it. I don't know who threw it together and was like, yeah, this, this encompasses a lot of like mid to late 90s, early 2000s punk rock. I don't know who that was, um, but they shouldn't be allowed to do that anymore because this is bad. It's weak. There's no drive to it. It's like... I don't know, it's just, it's not good. You guys heard it, it's just not good. The next thing I wanna talk about is the naming structure, which is a little out there and not super consistent. I have a list here, I'm gonna read off the names just so that I don't forget them. You have uh, Foundry, which is a kind of Fendery style uh, preamp. There's Peggy, which is an Ampeg bass amp. You have Albion, which is, I don't know, maybe a Marshall Plexi? I'm not really sure, I've never, I have no idea. Uh, you have Foxy, which I think is very clearly a Vox. There's Flatback, which for some strange reason is supposed to be a Mesa dual rectifier. There's Gemini, which I think is a different type of Fender sound, which is fine, because there are lots of different flavors of, you know, like kind of traditional Fender sounds. You have Nifty 50, which even though I did a video saying that it was basically kind of a 5150 style amp, it's really more of a modded Marshall Brown sound kind of amp. Think earlier Van Halen before he started using the PV5150. You have El Dorado, which is a Soldano and maybe the most similar to the actual amp. And then you have Guys, 
I've had this for a while. I just figured out what this one was like three days ago, and I didn't even figure it out. I saw a video about it. You have the Aviator. Now, I had seen so many people making videos about this, and no one could figure out what the Aviator was. Most people said it was a bass amp, and I saw one guy a few days ago doing one, and he goes, Aviator, oh, well, that's clearly a high watt, and it clicked. I was like, oh my God, it is a high watt, and it's my new favorite model. But the names kind of don't seem to mean anything. You know, you have Foundry, which I guess that's kind of like Fender. Uh, you have Peggy, which is kind of like Ampeg. Like, I get that. That makes sense. You have Voxy, which obviously sounds like a Voxy-style amp. But then you have Albion for a Marshall Plexi. And I've watched a lot of videos, and no one can seem to figure out where the name came from. Now, I'm not saying they need to be trying to make exact replicas of these amps. Naming structure, the way they look, all that. They don't have to be doing that. But... If they're gonna kinda go for it, they either need to go for it or not. Either make it like that or make it your own thing. But this kind of in the middle, no real explanation for what any of this stuff is, I don't, it's just not my favorite thing. Next is the controls. I'm gonna put a couple up here on the screen. So these are the controls for the Albion. These are the controls for the Foxy. These are the controls for the Peggy, which is a bass amp. These are the controls for the flatback. They're all the same. Do you see what I'm saying? They're all the same. If they're going to kind of vaguely go after models that we all already know so that we have a reference point, I would like to see the controls mirror that. I think for me in particular, being a huge Vox fan, being a huge AC30 fan, it's particularly evident in the Foxy model. My favorite way to use a Vox is to be blending in the normal and top boost channel. And in fact, it's one of the things that I really liked about my TC Electronic DC30, which was like an amp in a box kind of thing that they did. I've got a video up on that, you should check it out. But this doesn't really give you that. You have the same controls for everything, which I guess is fine. It, you have some continuity there. But then you have some controls that don't really mean anything or that it's not clear what they mean so you have depth and you have contour okay that's that's fairly self-explanatory those aren't uh you know like completely foreign ideas but then you have body thickness and brilliance I feel like those could have just been resonance and presence. I feel like that would have made a lot more sense. And based on a lot of the other videos I've seen, I think a lot of other people will feel that way too. My next complaint is that there's no real way to run out stereo. Maybe that's a little thing. This thing is $300 new. So I guess I've said it before, you don't get everything, but I feel like I don't know, I feel like this is capable of that, and it just isn't in there. It seems to be kind of an odd thing to leave out. I think it's especially strange that if you are using the uh, Dyne IR engine, which is their IR engine that they have in there, you can use a single cab with two different mics, but you can't use two different cabs, at least not that I found. But if you're using your own IRs, which is what I do, you can use two different cabs with different mics. So a lot of times, because I use the own hammer cabs, a lot of times I'm using maybe uh, a cab with a 57 and then a cab with a blend of a 57 and a 121 or a blend of a 121 and a 421, something like that. I feel like you get a better breadth of sound that way. And I think because of that, it would be so awesome if I could run stereo out of this into my interface. That's a little nitpicky. It's not a huge deal. Honestly, it, it would just be cool if it did it. My last thing that I want to talk about is one that, given the example, the thing that I'm going to compare it to, it just doesn't make a lot of sense to me. So you have your USB-C input here, if you guys can see that. Um, that is for you know, you plug it into your computer, you can load your IRs on, you can do firmware updates, things like that. Um, but you can't use this as an interface in any way. 
And that's kind of strange to me. For $300, you can't use it as an interface because the Boss IR2, which is like $200, can be used as an interface. So it just seems a little odd to me that something that's less expensive offers more physical features, at least. Maybe you can't do all the same deep diving that you can in, the, in an app to set things up. I don't know, I haven't used the IR2 before, but I do know that it can be used as an interface. And that would be so nice to have, especially if I'm not sitting here at my desk. It would be great to be able to just plug this in straight to my iPad and go straight into Logic. Like that would be nice. But again, it's a small thing. It's really not that big a deal. By and large, I love this. I really, really do love it. And I'm gonna continue to sing its praises. I just don't think it's fair for me to sit here and tell you the things that I like without also telling you the things that I don't like. That just wouldn't be fair. Guys, listen, I really appreciate you joining me again. I've got a video coming up later in the week where I'm gonna explain the rules for the giveaway that I have around here somewhere. I, it's, oh, it's right over there. I'm not gonna get up to go get it. So I'm giving away the Zoom MS50G Plus. Uh, I announced that last week. I'm still working on the details because I didn't know this, but YouTube has very specific rules on how you have to conduct a giveaway. So I'm just I'm getting everything in order, making sure that I'm following those rules. I'm gonna release a video either later this week or next weekend going over everything, kind of letting you guys know, hey, here are the exact rules. I do wanna say right now though, I was told it's important to say this, uh, YouTube is not sponsoring this, Zoom is not sponsoring this. Nobody is sponsoring this. I bought this with my own money. I played it. I thought, hey, this is really cool. I think it'd be fun to give it away. I think it would boost you know, engagement, which is what I wanna do. I wanna engage with you guys. If you've ever commented on any of these videos, then you know, like I try to always comment back because that's what I want. I wanna go back and forth. I wanna talk to you guys. I wanna build something. I want this to be a lot of fun. So, hey, listen. I appreciate you guys hanging out with me once again. Uh, I'm gonna try to edit this in a way where it's shorter than they have been over the last few weeks because they've really been dragging out. But regardless, I super duper appreciate you guys hanging out with me. I hope you have an awesome week this week. Later.